Is Wish going to make its way back up towards $20 a share? Or is it going to continue trickling down? What is happening, investors? It is your boy, Jack. I am not a financial advisor. I got the clothing line to prove that fact. And today we're going to be speaking about Wish. Towards the end of last year, Wish went public. And, you know, they went pretty parabolic pretty quickly. They went up 55%. But ultimately, they gave up 75% of that value over the coming half a year or so. Now, they are one of the newest companies to have been brought to, you know, the community over at Wall Street Bet's attention. I initially wrote this company off because I'm aware of who they are. I have ordered off of this company before. I remember in school, I really wanted some new shoes, some Nike Air Max. These were the shoes to have, but they were expensive. And I was a kid in school who had no money. They were maybe 150 euro in town. And I got them off Wish for about 20 euro. The shipping took about six weeks, but I got them and they looked real and I felt cool. And if you guys aren't aware of what Wish is, that's essentially it. They sell pretty much anything you could ever imagine and they aim to be cheaper than most other online retailers i.e. Amazon. Now in today's video I'm going to be looking at Wish with two separate perspectives. We're going to take a look at them from a long-term perspective okay we'll have a look at their balance sheet what has happened over the last few months over the last few years in particular how things are actually looking for the company because there's some really good things some really promising things and also some quite poor things there but we are also going to be having a look at them in the short term because if you make your way over to wall street bets you are going to see a lot of posts regarding wish now even though they don't have a particularly high short interest. We will go through the short interest because there is still some enough to, you know, lead to a somewhat small squeeze, but nothing near the extent we've seen with GameStop or AMC. But the apes seem to want Wish to go up one way or the other. We will take a look at what's going well and what's going poorly for the company. We will take a look at some of their biggest investors, which includes the Founder Fund, aka Peter Thiel, and some other big names who've been buying and also selling the company over the last few months. And one thing, an article from about five years ago, where Amazon and Alibaba have approached the five-year-old startup Wish but the CEO seems to want more than $10 billion. That was five years ago, which is currently valued at a market cap of $8.36 billion. They were offered $10 billion five years ago by Amazon and Alibaba. So basically, strap yourselves in. There's quite a bit we want to talk about with today's video. So right before we do get into it, Please, my friend, could I ask you to hit that juicy like button? It really would mean a lot to me. Perhaps drop me a comment down below. Let me know, are you an investor and are you in for the short term or for the long term? And please, my friend, if you are indeed new around here, consider hitting that juicy red subscribe button. It really does mean an awful lot to me. Also, if you're interested in joining my private Discord group, that'll be the first link in the description. In there, you will get access to all of my buy and sell alerts. I am contemplating buying this company as of right now. And that is the reason I actually started looking into Wish in the first place. As I said, I wrote it off initially, but the guys in there have been speaking about it lately. Pop in particular. I had to check it out. So before we get too into things, I just want to go through some of the basics. And I actually want to start it off by having a look at the stocks chart with a short-term outlook. So we're looking at the four-hour time frame right now. You'll see they made highs right here at about $32.50 a share. And then we went into this very prolonged, you know, downward period. If you have a look at the MACD, I mean, it was negative for a considerable period of time. The RSI, very negative an awful lot of the time. It seems like looking back through the charts history, it can't stay pretty much overbought. That's what would worry me somewhat in the short term, because I am thinking about opening a position. And looking at the MACD and the RSI right now, they're much higher than usual. We could see a pullback, but if the apes want stonk to go up, they get stonk to go up. When looking towards potential short-term price targets, okay, it was this huge upward move, okay, all the way to nearly $17 a share. It proceeded to come down, fill in more than 50% of this huge candle consolidate for me there's two primary places to be looking towards and fibonacci retracement really shows us where they are very clearly the first one is here this previous area they could not break through this 17 dollar mark that's where it bounced off and led to this downward movement right now wish is trading somewhere in the realms of about 14 dollars a share so that still represents some nice upside that's 20 percent and could happen very quickly, particularly if social media, if Wall Street Pets, etc. stays behind this company. But more so where I would be looking towards is here, the 50% point of the Fibonacci retracement from the very top to the very bottom. And that is actually nearly exactly $20 a share. So it's 50% of the Fib retracement and it is a psychological whole number. You're going to see a lot of people saying that they want this company to go to $20. So it's 50% of the fib retracement. It's a psychological number. And we rejected it twice back here, back in mid-March. So if I do buy in in the short term, this is pretty much going to be my price target, which is funny because they were that price on pretty much their first day of being public. So that just gives you an idea of where I'm looking at these guys in the short term. But now let's speak about the actual business, the underlying fundamentals, etc. 2020 revenue was at two and a half billion dollars. Now, given the fact the company is at a sub $10 billion market cap, that's a lot of revenue. 
and it was 34% year over year growth. And I mean, you can see that revenue year over year, how fast it has grown. Go back to 2018, it was 1.72 billion. 2017, 1.1 billion. Some absolutely huge revenue growth. You will also see some huge increases in the cost of revenue and gross profit has gone up accordingly also. But you can't overlook these operating expenses and the operating income going down absolutely terribly. Not to mention their terrible EBITDA, which is down here. But more on that slightly later. So basically, what we're seeing is some very nice growth, but it's also mimicking a startup to an extent, which Wish is not. We're seeing the cost of customer acquisitions go up hugely, which may not be a bad thing in the long term, but it's not something that can be ignored for a 10-year-old company who is absolutely huge. 107 million monthly average users in 2020, 19% year-over-year growth. This is what I'm saying, guys. This is a huge company. 2 billion cash and cash equivalents. It's close. You'll see as of the last quarter, their cash and equivalents was at 1.62 billion and their total current assets at about 1.9 billion and total assets at 1.999 billion. You will see they are very, very asset light. Look, property and equipment, 23 million. Right of use assets, 39 million. Other assets, 10 million. When they have 1.62 billion sitting there in cash. This is something that differentiates the likes of, you know, Wish from an Amazon. You think of Amazon, they have a lot more assets, like real tangible assets. 29.11 billion in just their property plant and equipment. So it's a very stark contrast, but Wish likes operating this way. Important to note that current liabilities for Wish stand at about 1 billion. Current assets are about 1.9 billion. They are operating at a net loss, so keep that in mind. The run rate isn't incredible, but it's not a worrying sign yet whatsoever. Loss from operations for the three months ended 31st of March at 126 million. As a percentage of their revenue, that's at about 17%. So obviously, it's not a great sign just yet. But with all of that being said, the growth is there. The growth is very, very real. This investor presentation is from January of this year. So some of it is outdated information, but still some facts and figures to look at. The global marketplace underpinned by technology and data. Okay, they're in 100 plus countries. Now we will get into this because I think one of their biggest challenges they have to face is actually having locations in more countries. As I said, I ordered a pair of shoes. It takes about six weeks to come. Over 500,000 merchants. It's the number one most downloaded shopping app 2017, 2018, and 2019. 640 million plus items shipped. 100 million plus monthly active users, as we said. Our merchants offer unbranded products at significant discounts to branded alternatives. And this is why things are so cheap. I bet pretty much everybody has seen Wish. You probably get ads for it on Facebook. They have a lot of money going to advertising right now. I see it pretty much every day scrolling through Facebook. And that is why they are so asset light as well. It's the merchants who take care of the inventory, of the shipping, etc, etc. User generated content serves as a source of trust and quality for our unbranded products. And they go on to speak about this, which is extraordinarily important to keep in mind whenever we are going to speak about wish in the future the value conscious consumers have been left behind by e-commerce really think about that for a moment we believe the next billion e-commerce customers will be these value conscious customers and i don't think they're wrong at all there's still a lot of people who won't shop online because they don't want to pay for the shipping or because they won't save any money in comparison to going down to their local town city whatever it is and actually shopping there. So what Wish does differently is it targets people with a lower median income than the likes of Amazon or even eBay, Alibaba, etc. Which does open them up to this huge market as we've seen. They're pretty much everywhere. 75% of Wish users have an annual household income of less than 75,000. I believe Amazon's average user is over 75,000. I did just go try and find that fact. I couldn't find it, but I'm sure I read it recently. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on it. So the value proposition towards merchants is this. We enable merchants to amplify reach and sales through product boost. 30% of our merchants have used product boost, about 138 million year to date revenue 2020. So like everybody who works online, advertising. So key financial highlights, just to bring it all together, extensible platform driving diversification of revenue. There is a lot of different aspects to wish as a company. Powerful combination of global scale and growth. This is one that really, really needs to happen. Significant operating leverage with ability to flex growth and margin daily. Attractive unit economics underpinned by data-driven user acquisition and engagement. And a highly capital efficient model with 1 billion plus of cash on the balance sheet. Much more so than that. So remember we were looking at the cost of revenue going up hugely, not even in proportion to the increased total revenue 
revenue for the company. Now, me personally, when I'm looking at pretty much any company, I don't mind seeing things like this. You will see Amazon, you'll see everybody doing things like this, but it has to make sense. June 14th, Wish announces partnership with a leading e-commerce platform, PrestaShop. This is a two-year partnership with the leading e-commerce platform. Through this partnership, more than 300,000 merchants and brands on the PrestaShop platform will be able to quickly and easily sell to millions of consumers on the Wish marketplace. It's things like this that cost money. It's also all of the advertising they're doing on Facebook, Google, everywhere that costs money. They say the majority of the increase in cost of revenue is primarily due to costs related to higher volume of logistic services. Fair enough, at least they are giving us an explanation. One more thing that I want to point out, when this company had previously crashed and it went down to about seven, eight dollars a share was because of this. The Roni allowed numerous discount retailers to come into their own, generating higher sales and profits, okay? Wish CEO and CFO told investors in a shareholder letter that the Roni outbreak caused the value-conscious consumer demographic to be disproportionately affected by the pandemic. As the economy starts to recover, we believe macro trends will have a positive impact on our business. And it makes sense when you think about it. If people are shopping on Wish, they more than likely are looking to save as much money as possible, especially if they have fallen on hard times due to the Roni. They're not going to spend the money now if they need it. Whereas a lot of people who have more money and be shopping on the likes of Amazon, etc. wouldn't really care as much. They'd continue shopping. So this was a company who was hit by the Roni and I think could come out of it better on the other side. Now, one thing I would really, really like to speak about is this, okay? Some of the institutional owners, in particular, Founders Fund V Management. This man right here, Peter Thiel. So under Founders Fund, Peter invested in Wish's IPO. Look how much lower in price they are now than they were then. This man has invested in Twillow from early on, Spotify, Palantir early on, and then two of the absolutely huge ones, PayPal and Facebook. So this man gets into very good companies very early on. You should be happy to see him buying this company if you are planning on going along in them. And then there's some weird ones in here. I found this company, Gailey Low. I tried to do some research into them. You'll see they have 103 million shares in the company. And there's a lot of companies around who do have literal millions of shares in this company. Now, as of late, well, not as of late, but going back to May times there was some sales, but also a lot of buys coming in here. Ultimately, when I take a look at this company, I see something that has to be considered relatively risky in the short term. In the long term, they have to do some things well in order to turn into, in my opinion, a very good investment. But the foundations are there. The amount of customers they have, if they can just monetize a little bit better, it's going to be fantastic long term. But right now, go on to Wall Street Bets and you're going to see a lot of apes looking for things along the lines of Wish. There's even people doing due diligence. That's not something we see often on Wall Street Bets. I'm actually joking to all the apes. I know they do a lot of DD realistically. But there is a lot of people speaking about Wish right now. It's pretty much third behind AMC and GameStop. Currently, Wish has a short volume ratio of about 21%. Other places say 25%. Other places say 15 Fintel's generally quite accurate. But anyway, it's a decent short interest. I think a move up towards $20 a share from 14 is very realistic in the short term as long as people stay behind this company. And that's still a very nice move, pretty much 40% or so. Do I think it could come down a little bit before that happens? Yes, but look where we are now. There was a strong period of consolidation. There was a huge breakout. There was a very strong pullback followed by some more consolidation moving into an upward trend. I don't see any very, very clear reason why it should come down too much lower, maybe towards the $12 mark or so. I don't really see why it should crash down at this stage. Unless a lot of people decide to sell their shares. Unless a lot of the apes move their money from here to AMC, etc, etc. But all in all, I do like the look of them. There's definitely some questions you have to ask yourself in regards to the long-term potential. In regards to, you know, can you deal with the revenue growing so quickly? I have so many tabs open. But essentially, are you happy seeing the cost of revenue, etc. go up at such a quick rate? Even if the revenue is too. Ask yourself those kind of questions. But anyway, my friends, they are my full thoughts on this company as of right now. I am going to be keeping up to date with them. Again, I don't have a position as of recording this video, but I am considering opening one more than likely for the swing towards $20. But who knows, it could potentially leave some in there for the long term. If you watch this video all the way till the end, you, my friend, are a true legend. And I really do appreciate you being here from the bottom of my heart. Your support genuinely means the world to me. I took a few days off and I am feeling a whole lot better for it right now. If you did enjoy the video, could I please ask you to hit that like button? Drop me that comment down below and subscribe if you're new around here. All of that genuinely helps me out so much. And if you are interested again in joining that private Discord community, that is the first link in the description. Anyway, guys, I hope you all have a beautiful, blessed day. I'll see you for another video very soon. Peace.